Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand on your feet and give God praise? Everyone in the building, stand on your feet and give God praise. If God has been good to you, shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. That was a wonderful praise dance. And of those who don't understand what praise dance is, it's worshiping him in the spirit. When they're listening to the music, they'll worship him in the spirit. And they're listening to his spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, our Father God, we come to you today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, O Heavenly Father. Lord, we just want to thank you for your greatness, Lord. Lord, my Father God, as I come before your people today, Lord, my Father God, I ask that you allow me to speak your word, O Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you decrease me, Lord, and increase me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, my Father God. Lord, allow your people to hear your word, Lord. Not my word, Lord, my Father God, but your word, Lord. Lord, allow me to allow your Holy Spirit to dwell in me, Lord, my Father God. And we just want to continue to give you praise, O Heavenly Father. Lord, my Father God, today there may be a message out there for people, Lord, my Father God. Someone, this message will touch, O Heavenly Father. Lord, my Father God, as when I spoke, Lord, it touched me as I read it, Lord, my Father God. So the message has already hit, O Heavenly Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your guidance, Lord. I thank you for your mercy, O Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for those who came to worship you, Lord, my Father God. I thank you for those who came into your house to see you, O Heavenly Father. Not to see me, Lord, my Father God, but to see you, O Heavenly Father. And if anyone came here to see me, Lord, my Father God, I ask that their mind was changed at the door, O Heavenly Father. Lord, my Father God, renew our mind, Lord, my Father God. Renew our minds daily so we may be able to hear your word, O Heavenly Father. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, for those who have your Bibles, I ask that you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And we will start at verse 30 to 33. Once you have it, say, I do. See, I already know the youth already had theirs on. Matthew chapter 6, you know, they've been studying that through uh, Bible study, so they, they way ahead of y'all. Amen. All right, and it reads, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is to cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take on thou saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with hell shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth do you have a need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for that. Amen. You may be seated. The message today that God gave me is if you're hungry, there's an answer. I just read to you the answer. But you have to have a spiritual understanding of what Jesus was saying to his disciples I mean you really have to understand if you're hungry God will provide I mean you know I, I be hungry every day 
And my, my wife will tell you, I eat all day long. And some of my coworkers will tell you, I just sit at my desk and I eat all day. So I know I'm hungry. But see, when you worship God in the spirit and you talk to him in the spirit and in truth, God will give you a whole different message of what he was talking about. He'll give you a whole different message. Now, we in our flesh, we go to the grocery store, we buy bread, meat, soda waters, water i mean we we buy like four packs of 24 packs of water like every time every month and we just drink it we even get the little water purifiers and put it on the faucet because we're so thirsty and we want good clean water but i'm gonna tell you that ain't gonna quench your thirst that that ain't gonna work i mean you're gonna forever be thirsty if you're gonna rely on natural water now i don't, don't want to you know break your faith and you know stop buying uh nesty and uh who is that aqua i mean but it's all right you can still purchase that you're gonna need that in the flesh but i'm telling you today you need another source to quench that thirst you need another source to quench that thirst and understand you're not gonna get it in the flesh it will not happen God created us to give him praise. Amen. Am I right? Amen. If I'm right, say amen. amen. You got to believe that. You got to trust in God and know that he created you to give him praise. Wow. Not for self-pleasure. Not to go around say I have this and I have that and this is what I have accomplished you were created to do other things for God to do his will but sometimes we'll sit back and we start talking about what we accomplished what I accomplished and where I'm going but the thing about it is you really ain't going nowhere if you ain't God, got God if Christ ain't leading you you ain't going nowhere you just have materialistic things that will soon wither away. If the knowledge that you receive is not about Jesus Christ, soon it would wither away. Because it's not heavenly things if it's not about Christ. We have to focus on heavenly things. That helps you worship God in spirit. When you focus on heavenly things. If I'm focused on what I accomplish, I'm going to continue to focus on what more can I accomplish. So back when I say God created you to praise him, now you got to understand why he created food, why he created bread, why he created water. I had my own little thought as I was meditating and sitting and listening to God and allowing him to speak to me. Do you know what it feels like to go hungry? Do anybody here know what it feels like to be hungry? You know, right? See, right now, some of y'all in here, we hungry now. I know I'm hungry. I know I'm hungry. But the bread was created... For you to understand, if you're hungry, you're going to seek for bread. You're going to get money to purchase bread to fill your fleshly body. But when you're hungry in the spirit, Jesus is what's going to fill you. Jesus say, I am the bread he is the bread when your tummies are filled you feel satisfied right well then when you receive the Holy Spirit then you feel satisfied right 
but sometimes we only feel just for a moment because we go back out there into the wilderness and it brings on more hunger how many of you work out sometime I'm not going to raise my hand because I don't but I work hard and it makes me hungry in life life brings circumstances and you got to keep going through life and as you go through life you get even hungrier when you get hungry you start searching even more now the problem is when your refrigerator is full there's an opportunity to where it can possibly possibly be empty there's a possibility you will not have a job to purchase more bread more meat more drinks to quench that thirst but I stand here today to let you know that Christ is there every single time you need him I need everybody in here to touch the person on the side of you and say he will quench your thirst he, he will quench your thirst do it again one more time See, right now, my mouth is dry and I'm thirsty and I see this water and it looks real good. But you want to know something? The Holy Spirit is carrying me on. I ain't worrying about that water. I'm good. I'm good. But I thank you for the man and woman of God that said it here, but I'm good. They're doing what God asked them to do, but I'm telling you, I'm good. Because the Holy Spirit is in me and I don't need it right now. I just don't need it right now. I want to ask you a question. Why do we feel that our pleasures are more important than God? I mean, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with that. I was talking to my wife the other day and I was, I was riding, down, we was riding down the street and uh, I saw a, a gambling shack. Well, they're not even shacks no more. I mean, they pretty much made them legal in Houston now. They own every corner. But I, I saw the gambling shack, and I saw a bunch of men out there just chilling. Nice rides, talking. Nobody fighting. I mean, they was having a good time. But this was on a, a, a Thursday. And I was wondering, why can't the Christians of God just come together it's just just chill we have to make everything so formal why we have to make everything so formal to where we just have to gather in this building why can't we go up to the corner and grab some soda waters and just stand it's just 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 louder out there just chill you know let the police come and tell us to get out the corner what you doing why can't we do those things? And so I was asking, I was like, babe, I don't know. I, I just wanna I, I just wanna get some people together and just let's go just somewhere and just stand. Let's just stand on the corner and just say, you know what, I love God. You know, not just go out there, brother, sister, are you okay? How's it going? No, hey, what's up? What's going on? You know God like I know God? Let me tell you something. I I know him personally. I used to be on the same corner you were standing on, seeking things. We as Christians, we got to get out of that, that formal thing, that thing of just, just being, hey, how you doing? Standing upright. But my thing is you have to do things in decent and in order. So that doesn't mean go stand on the corner and then buy a 40 ounce and still try to talk to him. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is feel comfortable. Feel all right with just going out there worshiping your God. We got to go and knock on some doors. I'm going to tell you, man, people do not mind getting your kids together. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, 
uh, youth against I don't know what. They don't mind grabbing your kids and sending them to dough to dough and saying, do you want to buy some candy? <laughs> Have y'all, did anybody here ever sold candy from dough to dough? I want to get my kids a walkie-talkie. That walkie-talkie like $25 in the store. But in the book they sent home from the school, guess how much it is? It's like $200. So they got to sell $200 worth of candies, but I bet you at work selling candy. I bet you sending the kids out to the door selling candy, Girl Scout cookies, and everything. Man, you just spoke it. There it is. It's free. So why can't we get our kids together? Don't say it's strangers. You just sent them to the strangers to the sell candy. Why can't we get our kids together with ourselves and say, hey, how you doing? Do you know God? I know God. Why can't we position ourselves to do this if we can do it for candy? Yeah. What I'm talking about is our own self-pleasures. We would do the things out of the ordinary for ourselves, but would you do things out of the ordinary for Jesus Christ? That's my question. I'm going to tell you, uh, the guy that, that went up to almost to the moon and jumped out, he didn't go to the moon, but the guy that went out to the earth atmosphere and jumped out and came back to earth with, with, with a parachute. I'm telling you, this, this is like, man, I thought skydiving was at the extreme at 30,000 feet. I don't know how high it is to the earth atmosphere, but I'm going to tell you something. This guy went and jumped. You know what he did it for? I did it just because I can do it. Because I, I know I can do it. But you know who sponsored him? Red Bull. Watch it. Watch it, boy. Red Bull sponsored him to go up there to the top and just, just leap. But my thing is, he did the extreme. He did the extreme. And he had Red Bull tatted all on him. His shirts, his jacket, the special made suit, everything for Red Bull. But I'm going to tell you, we can't even walk to the stop sign. I'm, I'm talking because I'm, I'm in this spot right now. I can't even walk to the stop sign and say, hey, excuse me, sir, how you doing? And I, I know they out there dealing whatever. I know they out there doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But I can't even get the courage to just walk out and say, have you ever thought about changing your life around? And it's just to walk up the street and you see the young men or young women every day and they speak to you and they say, hey, how you doing? They may even open the door for you. But you scared to say, Hey, man, how you doing? You know, I've been passing by you for a minute, and I know she out here on the corner every day. Do you know the Lord? Do you know my Lord, Jesus Christ? But where's the, the courage in us to do what we need to do for God? We got people on the earth that would do it for Red Bull, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whoever. But we can't do what we need to do for Christ. We got to check ourselves. We got to step back and do a timeline. I ain't going to tell you to count your blessings because we'll be here from I don't know to when. So I ain't going to tell you to count your blessings. I'm going to tell you to just do a timeline and see where your life is and what you was doing at that time and what was happening. I'm talking about the good and the bad. If you're hungry, there is an answer. Now we're not even going to talk about the physical hungry of, of food now. We're going to talk about I want a house. That's the type of hunger that's going to feed your self conscience. That's the type of hunger that's going to feed you to say, you know, I accomplished something. But how will you get that house is the question. Let me tell you something. Don't waste your prayers on going to get out on your knees and ask God for a new house. Don't do it. 
There's somebody in your life that you met that need healing. There's somebody in your life that you have met that needed love. Get on your knees and pray for someone else. Get on your knees and pray for others that are going through something. That are going through depression. Oppression. I mean, we ask for so many things. We have that bad as Christians. We, we ask for things that we know God has already given us. You just have to walk into that spiritual door and receive it. But how do you walk into it? You have to know God for him. You have to know him. Build that relationship with God. Worship him in truth. Understand his word. It just told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Those who want to be good, those who want to have happiness, those who want to be clean, those who want to just sit and relax, those who want peace, those who want whatever it is that you want. I'm going to read it again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The, the word didn't say, um, go to the pipe yard and ask them they hiring. The word didn't say, go to the work source and ask them, can you have a job helping other people find a job? The word didn't say that. The word said, seek ye first first the kingdom of God but the word does tell you that you will have to work so I'm not going to say it's not going it's, it's going to come without you working because you do have to work but what I'm saying is don't put the job first put God first when you put God first then these other things that we seek, that we want, that we desire, that we hope, that we love, that we crave for, will come. There's no doubt about it. You know how I know there is no doubt about it? Because I'm walking in it. But I wasn't walking in it at first. I wasn't walking in the spirit. I wasn't seeking him first. But don't take my word. Take God's word. Let me have you to open your Bibles to Revelation 21, 1 through 5. I'm not going to read it with you because I want you to see it yourself and I want you to read it to yourself. Because the blessing is in the word. So I'm not going to go on until we find it. You have it, say I do. All right. And it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I just saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. He prepared as a bride's adorned for his for her husband and I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he would dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat up upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. God's word is true. 
and it will happen. God is telling you what I say will happen. As I read God's word, I sit and I try to understand what is he saying to me? Not what is he saying to me to give to the people. No, what is he saying to me? Because I said this before, but I got it from Bishop and I understand. 90% of me doing God's will and ministering to his word is me walking. Because I don't get a chance to speak to every last one of you and tell you what God is saying. I don't get a chance to speak to everybody that I work with or everybody that I come in contact with at the grocery store on what God is saying. But my walk says a lot. Where I go, where I dwell, where I visit says a lot. Now, if I'm on the corner and I'm talking to young men about changing their life, that says a lot. But that's not saying a lot about me. That's saying a lot about the Holy Spirit. That's saying a lot about God. Because he could take a little man like me to go and walk up to a bunch of young men that has no thought or care about the next man and to be able to give them a word of God. I'm just letting you know today that God will feed you. But you have to understand what he's trying to feed you with. We read it first in six, uh, Matthew 6, 30-33. The food is already there. It's in the ground. It's planted. You see the seeds. You see it coming. You know it's going to come. But my thing is, where's your faith for the things that you don't see? Where's your trust in God? What we do is we try God. We challenge God. We don't trust in him. We don't have faith. We try him. Trying God is saying, you know what? Everything else over here don't work, so I'm go over here and see what they say and see if they say it's true. Oh, it is true. Then you start to understand, okay, then here's the trust. But the thing is, don't jump back over there and say, I wonder, can he do it again? Can he, can he bring me out of my situation again? You know, you go back over here and then you want to start walking right, acting right. You're trying it. You get what you need. Prayers are answered. You walk through the spiritual doors. You receive what he had in store for you. Guess what? You go back over here again. You're trying it. But what about when you get over here and you get those things he give you, then they go away because it's a part of life, but you don't go back over there. You stay over here. That's where the trust comes in. Because you don't jump back over there and say, you know what, let me try it again, get this, and then come back over here. If you stay here and you still have received those things that you've been asking for, and you continue to worship, praise him, thank him through all things. When you worship and praise him through all things, you're trusting him. Man, my bills ain't paid, but I'm going to church. You know what? I ain't got enough gas to make it to church. My light is on. You know what? Somebody give me $3 when I get there. I'm going to church. Not that I don't have the gas money, I'm just not going to go today. No, I'm, I'm going to try to make it. God will provide. There's an opportunity where you will not thirst anymore. No more in life would you have to thirst if you accept the Holy Spirit. If you accept God as your Lord and Savior. If you believe in him and know that he died on the cross for your sins and rose up from the dead if you believe that you will be saved your heart will continue to love your soul will have joy your mind would have peace 
If you believe in God, if you trust in God, if you have faith in his word, it will happen. So I just want to tell you, man, God loves you. But you got to praise him through all things. You were created to praise him. Continue to praise him. My husband ain't acting right. Continue to praise him. Wife not acting right. Continue to praise him. Bills not paid. Praise him. You just got $2,000 in the mailbox. Praise him. You just got a new job. Praise him. You have to praise God through all things. Not some things. All things. Not the good things. All things. Not the bad things. All things. Not the hurtful things. All things. Not the feel good things. All things. You got to praise him. You got to worship him. Brother Billy right there. You know, I'm not going to clap my hands because he's right there. No! Praise him through all things. You know what? I don't like this sister right here because she looks, she dressed better than me. No! Praise him through all things. You know what? My hair not cut today. So I ain't going to praise him. No! Through all things. I'm saying these things because this is what people think daily. Do I worship him today? No. Do I worship him tomorrow? No. You know what? I worship him next Sunday. No. You may not see next Sunday. You may not see next Sunday. You may not see Monday. Or the messed up thing, you may see it, but you may not be able to sleep. And if you don't know how to worship God in the spirit, you're going to think that's the only way that you can worship God is through voice. But it's not. But if you continue to learn to worship him and seek his word, his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, he'll let you know you can praise him by yourself. You can just hold yourself and just, just praise him. You can get out on your knees and don't have to say anything. You can just praise him. can't move. You can't walk. You know what? Y'all might be praising him right now. I don't know. That's your relationship with God. I can't call it out. But it's my duty to tell you what God is wanting you to do. But you can only, you can't understand from my word. You can only understand from God's relationship with him. I'm only speaking to you to try to break the ice. That's what I'm here for. Just to break the ice, to wither through the spirits that are affecting you from receiving the blessings that God has for you. That's why God created his teachers, his ministers, the bishops to lead you, to give you the word. We're no better than you. We just have a job and a task to wither through things to make sure that we have the courage to give you what God is saying. I'm telling you what God is saying, but I can't tell you what God is saying to you. Only you can understand what God is saying to you. Build a relationship with God. Continue to love him. Continue to worship him. Continue to praise him through all things. And I'm going to tell you right now, your tummies will be filled. Amen. Amen.